Is that really it? Or I guess if you're wanting to come into a plus ultra, I'll try this again. Um, yeah, Aizawa or... Obviously you didn't even have to do that, I could have just gone into the air and done the loops from the Aizawa, but I wanted to get a little bit extra damage in case I mess it up. Let's go again! Use some All Might this time. Bro, that didn't he I thought that would surely <laughs> media blow just from the just from the, uh, the yellow attack alone. Come on, that ridiculously long combo. Okay, you can do literally anything you want, and as long as you have the meter and resources to keep comboing, you can just combo forever with this character. He's ridiculous. Okay, hello everyone. This is Mr. Elbronin here again, and today we're doing a present mic breakdown. Today I'm also celebrating hitting 3,000 subscribers thanks to you guys, and I thought, what better way to pay respects than to pay respects to my My Hero One's Justice 2 breakdown videos, which really are what kickstarted my channel. So, thanks for that, thanks for watching these. I like to think that I've come a decent way, <laughs> at least in terms of microphone quality over the, the years since I've started, but... Okay, hello again everyone, this is Mr. Albarunen. Yeah, we've come a long way, and even though I don't play this game much anymore, it's still near and dear to my heart, and I enjoy my days making my breakdowns for all the characters and playing online matches. It was it was a good time, and it was a while ago. But today, we're going over a present Mike breakdown. He's a very interesting character, um, in that he doesn't really play the game in the same way a lot of other characters do. He kind of... Or it's just that he kind of ignores some mechanics of the game, like the Meteor Blow and the Wall Splats. He just doesn't do those, <laughs> like, which is good in some ways and bad in others. Like, for example, you can do the longest combo in the world. I, I uploaded a short recently, just showing, like, you can get, like, 70 hits with this guy, just doing random stuff. And the opponent just never gets Meteor Blown. He just has, like, such a low Meteor Blow aspect. You can just do, like, infinitely long combos and just do whatever you want. So that's really good. Like, whenever you get a hit on the opponent, you can just do whatever the hell you like. And you'll probably be able to get, you know, a combo going. And just keep it going for as long as you like or as long as you have meter. Um, but also, he never really gets wall splats. So you never get that kind of extension. But then, the fact that you never get Meteor Blows d means that you don't really need the... Um, advanced wall splat combos anyways, and taking into the into account that he has like a pseudo infinite using just his jump attack um, He's a very strange character. So like if I've run up spent all my meter It's really easy to just get these loops where you just loop over your Like this like infinitely <laughs> I messed it up there. You can keep doing it just Oops As long as the timing's correct, you can just do this forever. So thanks to this, he can get some pretty decent damage for some pretty cheap combos, but it's just weird that he has extremely long combos that consist of one button. And to be fair, as you saw, like me trying to do them here, they are kind of hard to do, you need to time the dash in correctly, or else it doesn't really work. And also, I have the opponent on not recover. These do work on recovery, but I don't want to spend half the video <laughs> screwing up combos. Let's see, that still works, even if you don't dash cancel. So, he's got those loops with his jump attack, so he can just do weird, extremely long, like, three minute long combos nearly, where he's just doing the same button over and over again. The opponent never gets meteor blown. They also never get stuck in the wall, so he's just a very weird, kind of janky character. Even when it comes to his zoning, like his pro projectiles, you can't dash cancel or cancel them into anything else. So he's just like a weird... He just feels very strange, but he's pretty powerful from what I've played online. His projectiles have really great tracking. He has, you know, really far-reaching normal attacks that work like projectiles. He's very strange, but very unique and powerful character for it. So... I can't wait to play with him some more. I'll play some more after I make this breakdown. But anyways, let's actually get, <laughs> let's get into the actual character. So, his regular buttons. 
is this interesting attack string, probably has one of the most unique attack strings in the game, not just because of the shimmy at the end, but because of the actual buttons themselves. So he does do the regular dash forward like most characters do, you know, where you run in and then do the button to get close to the opponent, and when you're really far away they do a bit more of a run. But present Mike, he actually has a disconnected attack, so it's not actually attached to him, because it's this little projectile as he yells at the opponent. Which is very interesting, because it allows you to mash on opponents a lot more easily. Like, for instance, if I, if Bakugo was trying to press buttons against me, and we mash buttons at the same time, he would have to do, like, you know, he has to run in, and then he hits, he actually hits you when you press the attack button. But present Mike, he puts this wall of attack, or of hitbox in front of you, so Bakugo would just walk into that and then get hit. So anyone that has regular attacks completely gets beaten by your attacks because your attacks go in front of where you are. So instead of even trading with your opponent or even if they have really fast attacks like Momo or Bakugo or Shoot Style Deku, even though they're really fast, they can't go in front of them like Present Mike's does. So he just outright beats people that are mashing so much of the time and that's really, really satisfying. And it's very, very useful, especially if they don't realize why they're losing. They're just like, oh my god, I'm mashing and why isn't it working? And then you just keep getting combos and it's great. Uh, it does very little damage though, but the fact that he has these like weird loops kind of makes up for it. Because then he can get, you know, <clears throat> decent damage for pretty cheap anyways. And uh, yeah, he's a very non-traditional character, but having these really interesting attacks, um, makes up for their low damage. His aerial attack, we've mentioned it already, <laughs> it's probably his most weird thing, but um, it's just very good, it reaches really far, it's quite fast, it bounces the opponent so much that you can combo them onto the ground if you decide to do that, like if I decide to just do like something like that and combo on the ground like a normal person, I can do a combo like that. But then also I can just loop it into itself. Which is a little bit harder, but you can do it for a lot longer and get more damage from it. <clears throat> uh, his tilt attack. His tilt attack in the air and on the ground are quite similar. He just like jumps in the air, does this weird like woo, and makes a little field in front of him. They look I'm not too impressed with present Mike's visual effects, honestly, like, this animation is so weird looking. But, you know, it gets the job done, and it's actually a really, really good armor attack, because in this game where armor beats armor, um, even if they did their armor attack first, and, you know, their armor attack would smash through mine, I'm really high in the sky, and I'm just gonna go straight over. I'll try with Bakugo. Um, where is it? Counter attack. Oops. It has a kind of weird hitbox, but I'll try. See, I go in the air and I completely dodge it, and I might be able to punish theirs because I recover a lot faster than most counter attacks. Because you know, counter attacks are really punishable on whiff, not on hit, hit or block, but on whiff because you can't cancel them; they're very minus. But present Mike's leaves them in the air, so if you, he whiffs theirs, then you can go in for an attack and and get something going, even if it whiffs, I mean. He can cancel into an air thing, it's just really, really good armor attack. It counters other armor attacks way better than normal armor attacks do. It goes over regular attacks, it goes over red attacks, you know, which would beat armor attacks. It's just really good, and he can cancel it into his quirk buttons to get some more damage, like if you want to cancel it into his quirk 1, or his quirk 2, or whatever. Usually you're going to do quirk 2 if you want to get a combo from it, but um... Yeah. In the air, it's basically the same, except I would much prefer to do the ground version that puts him high in the air, whereas the air version just takes him down to the ground and, like, leaves you here. Because it does the back basically the same thing, just leaves him in a worse position, so eh, they're about the same. His red attack, on the other hand, is also really good. It has great range and stuns the opponent for a combo. And not only does it have great range, it's a disjointed hitbox, so unlike someone like Uraraka, who has pretty good range on her red attack, um, if I did manage to time attack correctly, I could interrupt her, but as this massive hitbox is in front of me, the opponent would have to be like right in my face, or just interrupt me before he even comes out, because there's no way they're countering me when I have this massive hitbox in front of me, and if they get hit by it, I get to go in for a full combo. 
I messed it up, but uh, full combo. <laughs> Um, I think that's all of his regular attacks. Yeah, his red attack. Um, his dash is nothing too, men too mentionable. It's decently fast, but pretty average. His jumps is actually pretty floaty. I didn't even realize that. Side, side step is pretty normal. Yeah, floaty jump. That's about it. Okay, now for his quirk buttons. <laughs> his quirk one is a really interestingly boring move. A lot of people never use it, and all the guides for this character that I've seen say it's kind of a pointless special move and that there's not really useful, which is what I thought at first as well, because like, you can't even dash cancel it for a combo, because the opponent just gets launched away too quickly, you can't even cancel it until plus ultra, this applies for both, both plus ultras, no matter how fast you cancel it, you just don't combo off of it, so it doesn't really seem that useful in that aspect, and like, it does some okay damage, but it does pretty similar to this special move, his quirk too, when it's in a combo, so if I do something like this, that does 5,800 damage. That does 5,700. So it's when it's in the middle of a combo, its damage is really negligible. So like, what's really useful about this move? And what I found that's useful about it is either when you're ending a really short combo and you just want to get the opponent off of you, you can do that, you know, you get a little burst of damage. But I find it, what it's actually meant to be used for is a very safe special move. So if I put Bakugo on to guard, you can see what makes this special move very safe. So, Present Mike is generally a really unsafe character. Like, his Tilt Quirk 1 is the most unsafe thing in the game. You can even punish it, like, from this distance if the opponent blocks it. It's just very, very unsafe. But his Quirk 1 blasts the opponent so far away. They get launched to the other side of the damn screen. Oh, let me get his guard meter back. But, uh, yeah. It's basically... Let me turn off... Um, that for a sec. So yeah, it pushes the opponent really far away. So whenever you're doing attack and you're like not too sure about what to do and you're just like, eh, I either keep myself really safe or get an okay burst of damage, you can just do this and then it just completely launches them to the other side of the screen. So like, oh, yellow attack? Nope, you're gone. And also, it is actually out on the screen for a decent amount of time and it's surprising how long it's actually out there. If I get Bakugo to walk in on me and like do an attack or something. A lot of the time the opponent like accidentally walks into it when you do it. Walks in at such a weird time. But if I do it now and then sometimes the late explosion actually beat hits the opponent. Like that, and then it blasts them full screen, and you can do some zoning again. But yeah, basically it's just really good to keep yourself super safe, and it also does some decent like, guard pressure. So if I get Bakugo to block in the corner here, particularly in the corner, it's really amazing. So he's standing in the corner, let me turn guard pressure back on. So, we're in the corner, and when I do this special move, look how much guard meter it does. It took away like half of his guard meter from the one special move. When it's in the rig, um, in mid screen, it doesn't actually do that much, as you can see. It just does a little chunk, because it doesn't get all the hits. But when you're near a wall, it does some beefy guard damage. <laughs> and, I find it's actually advantageous on block, and even if it's not advantageous on block, it feels advantageous on block, because of how amazing present Mike's regular attacks are. So if I push the opponent full screen, Oh, not full screen, but all this distance away. And Bakugo goes to attack me um, after guard. I get him to do a target combo. <clears throat> Let me get some of his guard meter back here. So, I do some things. Whoops. I do that. And if the opponent tries to mash on me or do anything, I'm gonna win because I have really amazing buttons. And literally anything that they do is gonna be beaten by me doing whatever I want, unless I mess up like that. <laughs> but basically, it's just a really good special move for launching the opponent away, keeping yourself very safe, and if you're near a corner, it can do some really, really good guard um, meter damage, whatever that's called. Now his Tilt Quirk one is his zoning tool. It does really decent damage for a projectile, 3,500, that's pretty good, and it launches the opponent really far away. So if you are trying to play the zoning game, it's really good for that, because it pushes them away so you can throw more projectiles. But keep in mind, it is very, very unsafe. Um, if the opponent blocks it, like, from even this distance, they can just, you know, run in and punish you. It's very punishable, especially if you miss it, like, doing that, you're dead. 
And it also, what makes it super unsafe is that it can't be cancelled. You can't dash cancel it, you can't cancel into it as any of his other special moves, or even a plus ultra. It's very unsafe, so you want to use it when you're pretty sure the opponent's actually going to get hit by it. Now, uh, conveniently, it does come in a few options. You can either make it tilt to the, go to the right or go to the left, if you want to catch an opponent that's going sideways. But it also has pretty good tracking itself. So as you can see there, even though I sent it to the right, it kept going, it tracked into the Bakugo on the left. So it went out, then it tracked back in on him. And if I think the opponent's gonna jump in the air, I can even make it go upwards, which can do some extra damage and it launches them higher into the air, but it does, you're not really gonna get a wall splat from it. It just looks really cool how it carries them into the air and it can hit an airborne opponent. But basically, this is your zoning tool, but be really careful using it, because it's unsafe. It does good damage, and it launches the opponent far away, but yeah, use it your own risk. And make sure you're aiming it to, you know, see where the opponent's going, but it has great tracking, and honestly, it hits most of the time anyways. So, yeah. That's about all I have to say for that. It's the same in the air as it is on the ground. You'd think the air version would be a little bit better, but you have to be careful that you don't just fall to the ground. You have to make sure that, like, after you do something, you do, like, a yellow attack after it or something. Because sometimes, you know, people find it a bit hard to when you to punish an aerial move if they're on the ground. Even if they dodge it, they have to jump into the air to punish you. So if you try to, if you do an armor attack or something to counter them jumping into the air, that can be pretty useful. So it's a little bit safer doing it in the air, but still not totally safe. And it does a little less damage because it doesn't get, like, the proper hits. But, yeah, still a pretty good projectile. Now is Quirk 2 is also really really strange it kind of fits in with his spacing character style you know we, he has really good spacing with his regular buttons because they're like projectiles this projectile is a really really good projectile and this is like an interesting like movement move so it's not really a projectile but it moves him really far in and moves him really far out so he dashes in on the opponent hits them and then bonks out and then runs away <laughs> So I guess you could count it as a zoning tool. It's, it's controlling space, so it's zoning. Now, it is also pretty good um, on guard as well. So even if the opponent blocks it, it leaves you airborne. So if they try to punish you, you can go easily cancel it. Well, not cancel it, but it feels like a cancel it's so good. But you can go into a yellow attack. Oops. To counter them trying to press buttons. Or you can even just do a regular bonk on the head. And, um get his guard meter back. Yeah, it's really good. Even if they block it, it's no worries. It's you know, just really good like that. <laughs> and even if they do block it and you just want to run away, you can just sidestep afterwards and then you make a bunch of distance. Or you could do it and then go into your projectile. It's just really good for making space and it's quite safe. And it's also what you're going to be using in combos where this special move, you know, launches the opponent in a way that you can't really combo with it. This one you actually can. It can be a little bit finicky though, because if you time the dash cancel wrong, you can actually dash cancel before the move actually hits. So if I do this, I'll dash cancel before the move actually comes out. So I need to make sure I wait for the thing to hit and then quickly do a dash cancel and quickly attack. Because if you attack a little bit late, the opponent will, you know, fly away. Like that. So you want to be really quick. But if you are, you get some good reward. And then that leads to some simple, simple combos like this, where you can combo it off of your armor attack and then do something like this. Oops, messed it up. But as you can see, you're still getting good damage and I could have looped that for a lot longer. So that's basically the real use of this special move. There's not much more to it. It's just a good like combo extender, whereas all of your other special moves cannot really extend combos. So it's just used to get a little bit extra damage in your combos if you're wanting to do that. And it's also a really interesting like jump in tool to catch your opponent off guard if they think you're going to go for you know your projectile. Like especially at this kind of range where you would maybe think to go for a projectile if you're a normal character like Toga or something. But with present Mike. You can actually go for this, and it kind of can work in the same range you would do a projectile, and it's a lot safer. And you know, you catch your opponent off guard, get, hit them with that. And if you want to go in for pressure or go for a combo, you can dash cancel it and spend some meter on it. And then when they are really far away, then you go for this special move that is a lot better at distance because it's got good tracking from afar. 
Next, his Tilkwark 2 is probably one of his... Oh, actually, I said that about nearly all of these, but he has very interesting special moves, and this is another one of them. So he brings out these speakers, and you can only get three of them. He can summon two types of them. If he summons it by using the tilt motion in, like, back or sideways, he'll summon a, like, laying down one. But if he does it towards the opponent, he'll summon a standing one. Now, how do you activate these? You just do the same input, or just you just do tilt, quote, to, and then hold the button down. And then he activates it, and then they release some kind of sound explosion shockwave, depending on what type they are. If you summon a standing one, it'll release three projectiles that tri travel decently far. So this is a really good asset to add into his zoning toolkit. So if you, like, throw out one of these, or you throw out one of these, you can just keep it in his toolkit if you're wanting to keep himself a little bit safe. Maybe you've, like, hit the opponent up close with this, and you're like, okay, bring out one of these, and then I do one of these, and then go into this, and then maybe that would have comboed if I didn't screw it up. It's just a lot safer of a projectile than going for this, and it covers a similar distance to the projectile. It doesn't go full screen, but it does a pretty decent distance. Like, that nearly hit Bakugo there. So it's a safe projectile, it has really good hitbox, considering there's three of them. So it's a very big attack, very good like that. Um, you don't get a combo off of it, but it's just mainly a zoning tool, and you just, you know... Because people are going to be scared of this really big projectile of yours, you get time to summon this, and then when they do get a little bit closer, you can go for that, and then that's just a ton of hitbox. Like, if you summon a few of these, that is, like, the entire floor is just covered with these projectiles flying everywhere. There's no way they can dodge it except for hiding in the sky. And then when you're in the sky, you've got this, or you've got this. And, yeah, he's got very good space control using them. However, I prefer to use these... Oops. I prefer to use these speakers, the lying down ones, because they actually lead to a combo, and they have a larger hitbox in that they hit all around them. So these ones are a lot better when you just want to like throw the speaker out and then kind of forget about it. They last for a long while, by the way. Um, so you can just leave it on the screen and forget about it, and then anytime the opponent comes here, I'm going to be like, oh, let me activate that and see if they get hit by it. If they get hit by it, cool. If they block it, it's pretty advantageous on block, I'm pretty sure. Let me get Bakugo to block. So if I'm over here, he happens to be near it, he blocks it, I get to dash in, do some pressure. Oops, I should have cancelled into this, and maybe he would have... No, whatever. He's gone now. But yeah, I prefer this speaker, I find it's a lot more applicable in a, in a match, just playing normally, because you can just leave it out there, be like, oh damn, the opponent's near my speaker, let me do this, and if they get hit by it, boom, you get a combo, or you get to go in for some pressure, and if they don't block it, you get, yeah, a combo. But um, this one is still very useful because it's used as mainly a zoning tool, but I don't find it's really useful as a setup tool. Like, you don't just leave it there and then forget about it, because the opponent has to be in front of it. Like, if I have it here, and then Bakugo ends up over here, like, this speaker is just totally useless now until he decides to walk back into this, like, range in front of it, because it doesn't change <laughs> direction. So these ones I usually just, like, summon and then like, put up instantly as, like, a projectile. Or maybe I bring out two and then bring them out and just use them as zoning tools, but that, yeah, I really just use them as zoning tools because they're not that useful for much else. So, yeah, keep that in mind, but I definitely recommend, like, after you've finished a combo, maybe you've blasted them away or you've accidentally messed up doing this combo, just summon one of these. And then just leave them there, or maybe after you've hit a projectile, be like, okay, I've got some time now, let me just summon a projectile, I'll speak real quick, and then just have them scattered all over the screen. There's not really a point in having them beside each other, because it's not like they do much damage, like, even if I place three right beside each other. Even if he gets hit by all three, like, you're not getting that much extra damage. So it's more about having the ability to hit them, so I prefer to, you know, leave them out at really different sections of the screen, so that no matter where the opponent is, I can be like, oh, he's kind of near one of my speakers. And then, yeah, I have more chance of actually activating them and then hitting with a combo. Like, oh cool, got a combo, run in, and do a combo. So, very interesting setup tools. I honestly find them a lot more useful than other setup tools that are in this game, like the, um, Gentles mirrors and stuff. These are actually pretty applicable, mainly the lying down ones. Lying down ones are the only real ones I use, because they're just awesome. Okay, and uh, you can't 
You can't um, summon a speaker while you're in the air, but you can activate them. Which is useful, because then you can do this stuff. Okay, and now for his plus ultras. His plus ultra one is honestly really, really good. It's, reg it's startup hitbox is not that great, but that it's awesome that it keeps going the whole time, including that last explosion. So even if you miss it, it's really hard to punish because that massive explosion happens right at the end and it just does a big chunk of damage and it's humongous and it, he recovers really quickly after that last explosion. So it keeps him at advantageous on block. And it's so advantageous that you can actually even combo off of it if you're kind of near a wall. So say if I'm around here and I've just done a simple combo and I'm like, oh, let's go for a plus ultra. I can actually combo off of this plus ultra without using a sidekick or anything because it re recovers so quickly. <laughs> Excuse me, Bakugo, don't screw this up. Oh, we kind of turned around, maybe it won't work. But especially when you're right beside a wall, or if your opponent isn't, isn't recovering instantly. But if you're right facing a wall, usually this works. Oh my god, I messed it up. Again. Let me just turn him off for recovery so I can show this. We don't spend half the video me messing it up. But basically, when you're anywhere near a wall, you don't even have to be this close. I'm just embarrassed that I'm messing it up so often. You can get a cob off of it. And then go in for these loops again. And yeah, that's really awesome. So if you ever realize you're near a wall, just pop a plus ultra one, see if you can combo off of it. And because it's, you know, plus ultra one, and it's my hero one's justice too, it's reasonably easy to combo off of it using a support. So if you summon All Might, oh that was a bit late, huh? You can summon All Might or Aizawa to catch them after it, and get a combo going from it. Oops, I was a little bit slow. But you can see that it's gonna be pretty simple. Just depending on what you want to get after it, maybe I can jump into the air. Oh, god, I forgot <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, you can combo off of it. It's pretty easy to combo off of it. His plus ultra 2 has a decent hitbox. Oh, hello. Sorry. <laughs> it has a pretty decent hitbox in front of him. It can hit around this distance. So you can use it as a kind of zoning tool, but I wouldn't want to risk it, <laughs> wasting it. And both of his plus ultras are ground only, unfortunately, because his combo spends most of the time in the air. Pretty cool plus ultra too. Average damage, maybe a bit below average, I don't even remember. But those are his plus ultras. His plus ultra 3 will work pretty similarly that, as anyone else's. It's good that it holds him on the ground, so it's not going to launch him away awkwardly to miss damage. And, yeah, with his plus ultras, um, <laughs> this probably isn't something I recommend with a lot of characters, but honestly with present Mike, I recommend you be a little bit reckless with your meter, because you don't really have much to use your meter for. You can't use it to dash cancel your projectiles to keep it safe, and you're not really going to be dash cancelling this, and your combos, if you get good at the timing, are free. And honestly, but they become easier when you don't have meter, so that you don't accidentally dash cancel them like I do here. Like, if I do it a little bit too quickly, I spend meter on it, and I don't want to do that if I can make it free. So, I recommend you be really reckless. Like, if I have two bars of meter, I honestly really recommend you just go, Mer Plus Ultra 2, get a big chunk of damage. Actually, maybe not a Plus Ultra 2, that seems like a waste of meter. But go for Plus Ultra 1, because then, you know, if you're near a wall, you can get a combo of it. If you're not near a wall, summon a support to combo off of it. Get a combo of it if you don't suck like me. But um, yeah, just spend all of your meter, because when you have no meter, I feel like you're honestly a stronger character, because any hit you get, maybe if you just have a little tiny bit of meter. So like if you have one bar of plus ultra meter, I feel like that's where you're best. If you have one letter, look what, you can just do simple stuff like this, and then your combos are the easiest thing in the world, because you can't accidentally dash cancel. You don't have to worry about timing at all. Oops. If you're me, you can still mess it up, but it's really easy because you can just keep mashing. Uh, oh my god. I say it's easy and I mess it up, come on. And then you can do this without worrying about wasting your meter. 
and holy moly, how do I keep messing this up? You can get like 12,000 damage from just looping that over and over again if you get better at it. But, uh, you know, I'm just not a masher, I guess. Let me try again. Nope. Nope. <laughs> but it just makes it a lot easier when you have no meter. You can just mash the button and you don't have to worry about timing it correctly, which is particularly helpful in an online scenario. So yeah, if you get a hit, go for a plus ultra 3. Spend that meter, baby. Okay, now I think we're into the combo portion of the video. So, what combos will you do with Present Mike? I wonder what, if I haven't spoiled them all already. So basically, with Present Mike, um, your combos are always going to be something like this. If you get a regular hit, you're just going to cancel it into an armor attack, and then cancel the armor attack into your quirk 2. And then, from the quirk 2, you can either leave it there, and then try to get a reset on the opponent, trying to recover. Which is something that I like doing, and that's why I like that the quirk 2 leaves you in the air. Because you can kind of go for a reset and chase the opponent down. If you think they're going to recover and mash buttons, you can dash in and do an armor attack. It's pretty useful. I love that when it leaves you in the air and you go for a dash, it dashes you straight at the opponent, so you get a homing dash, basically. So that's very useful. But if you do want to spend some meter on your combo, um, I'm going to turn recovery off so I don't spend an hour trying to land combos. But, um... You can do something like this, and then go into this situation. And then if you do mess, mess it up, like, getting 9,000 damage is really good for a single dash cancel, but you can get up to 12,000 damage, and I haven't played this game in so long, I think my execution's kind of gone down the drain. <laughs> if it was ever there. Okay, ignore that I'm accidentally dash cancelling here. I'm just showing you how much damage you can get from this. And then, oh yeah, you do that. And then, uh, there we go. That's a combo. I could have made it even longer. I could have gone on for like, till 70 hits, honestly. But, um, I guess I kind of suck at this game. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's his base combo that you're going to be doing off of anything. Obviously, if you land an aerial hit, you're going to be going for this. Um, if you want to spend some meter for some easier combos, you can always do, you know, hits into an armor attack into part two, and then loop that. If you're finding the loops a little bit hard, and even this is going to be some decent damage, like a few bars, 10,000 damage, pretty good. Uh, but obviously, if you can time these loops, you may as well do them, right? It is fun seeing how angry the opponent gets if you have such easy combos. If you get a red attack, because you can combo off of it, you're just going to do literally the exact same thing. And do this, into this, and then I don't know, do that if you like to cash out quickly. But see, look, that's a simple combo 10,000 damage, one bar, eh, pretty easy. And I could have gone for a lot longer if I decided I wanted to, or if I felt like I had the execution to. Um, if you land yellow attack, you're just gonna do the exact same thing. Surprise, surprise. You're just gonna cancel into Quirk 2 and then dash cancel that. If you land an aerial air attack, it's going to be the same thing. The only time where your combos are a little bit different is if you have a speaker on the screen. Because if I have a speaker on the screen, then I've got a extra combo tool. So if I do something like... Um, I can do something like that, and then I can combo off of my yellow attack. Um, you don't want to do it off of your quirk 2, because then the opponent's going to be airborne. But if you do... Let me get one of these behind here. So if I'm comboing my opponent, and I realize, oh damn, I've got some speakers on the screen, I can get a little bit of a combo like this going. I could have gone for a red attack there, actually. And that just lets you get a little bit extra damage at the beginning of your loops, so that you can get some more damage a little bit easier. Do whatever you want. See, your combos can go on forever with this character because he just gets no media block. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Even that wasn't a media blow? Are you kidding me? 77 hits and that ridiculously long combo. No media blow. Okay, sure. 
So, as you can see, you can extend your combos literally however you want, but it's really cool when you have a speaker on the screen, you just do a few hits, or even if you think like, oh no, I'm getting out of the range of a speaker, but I really want to extend with it, and I'm like, in this range, and I wouldn't be able to do a full string, just cancel it quickly into the speaker, then cool, do that, and then use a the speaker explosion. So that was a little bit far away. But, um, oops. You can obviously go for red attack, get a little bit more damage in there. Just so you don't have to put too much effort into your loops. And then you get a extra damage at the end. At the beginning, I mean, in case you mess it up. So yeah. Is that really it? Is that really it? Or I guess if you're wanting to come into a plus ultra, I'll try this again. Um, yeah, Aizawa or... Obviously, you didn't even have to do that. I could have just gone into the air and done the loops from the Aizawa, but I wanted to get a little bit extra damage in case I mess it up. Let's go again. Use some All Might this time. Bro, that didn't he I thought that would surely <laughs> media blow just from the just from the, uh, the yellow attack alone. Come on, that ridiculously long combo. Okay, you can do literally anything you want, and as long as you have the meter and resources to keep comboing, you can just combo forever with this character. He's ridiculous. But uh, I think that's basically it. Honestly, like the only way to combo into your plus ultra two is from the ground. So maybe you land a single one of those, and you go something like this. That's about all you're gonna do. But. That's this character. He's an interesting blend of uh, unique and strange and unnormal character, but he's also kind of simple in that his combos are basically the same no matter what hit you do, and no matter what hit you do, you're going to be able to get a ridiculously long combo, and you can do the same combo no matter what, and you can just kind of mindlessly extend your combos like I did just then, <laughs> like plus ultra one, oh yeah sure, or Aizawa, and then do some random stuff. As long as you have the resources, you can just do whatever you like with this character. He's got some awesome setup tools, he's got some awesome zoning tools, he's got some awesome setup zoning tools. Oops. Um, he's got some good guard pressure, he can keep himself safe using this. And he's, 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 he's a fun character. He's got really awesome zoning with his regular buttons as well. His spacing's so good with this stuff where he can jump in and out really quickly and then use his regular buttons to catch the opponent if they try to punish you. And he's just a really awesome, very unique character. I'm impressed that they managed to keep making characters feel unique in this game. That's old and doesn't seem like it has too much love anymore and they've got a lot of characters already. They keep managing to make new characters, so good job on the new character, and I hope you enjoyed this guide. Go out and play some Present Mike, because he's a fun character, and this game honestly does deserve some love. I think I'll go play some more right now. Anyways, thanks for watching this breakdown. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.